Hello everyone, I'm... Wait, hold on, this is your channel. What am I doing? You're a trope. It's okay. Brrrrayo! Tsukare! Katsukare! 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 Katsukare!
in my spare time, I used to have this little routine where I would play reviews of the Hotel Transylvania films in the background while playing games, ranging from Cinema Sins and uh, Electro Dragon. I haven't watched a film reviewing channel in like a year or two. It's been exclusively game reviews for me, so I've basically gone into this without having to, you know, the big film critic mindset. I'm going into yeah. this just as myself again. Yeah, my, my point is the majority of the reviews were pretty nasty and criticizing the uh, very weak, criticizing the stories and the on how much effort they trying to put into being funny rather than making a good story. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what we will admit that is pretty much the ho that is pretty much the uh, downsides of Hotel Transylvania in a nutshell. They spend too much time trying to be as over the top, hyperactive and funny as much as they can and dated. And be des and of course being as desperate to be co to be quote unquote hip and cool with the kids when it really when it just ends up dating the film really badly. Like with the film's constant, like with the first movie's constant oh use of I'm God. Uh, of friggin' sex and I know it and all that bullshit. But like okay. this time we had we had a song like that which was "Give It to Me I'm Worth It," which I haven't heard since that movie was well since that song was made. Yeah, that was a very that already cringy somewhat gimmicky. dated the movie, but like that was a very cringy gimmicky moment. If I can, yeah, the line was this, if I can show you I can bust a move, will you try to fly then? Yeah, that was very much I could have done without that. But, I mean, yeah. What else is there to talk about? Uh, oh. Uh, there was some nice, we gotta see Mel Brooks as freaking Vlad. Vlad, Dra uh, Dracula's I mean, father. That, hold on, that actually should go into the sin talk. Is there anything we should talk about before we get into the sins, or... Yeah, I think we should keep talking about more of the, uh, what we saw first before we get right into the, the circles. Because I still think there's stuff we need to cover. Like, oh, the, the stuff we... What about the stuff that we found <sighs> was really funny? Like, I, I, I hate games. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I hate games now. <laughs> really? The gaming Navi? You've come down to this point? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. That's all I gotta say. Oh no, I lost my auction for Glover. Oh, well that's awkward. Let me go grab this sitting list so we can be ready. And there it is. So yeah. Is there... So yeah, what else can we have to say about oh. the movie as a whole before we get what about to some of... Yeah, what about some of the moments that we saw at the beginning? Like... Dra like uh, when, especially when they were going out to do when they oh, were uh, when Dracula and uh, Mavis were going out for their little flight night. Okay, so I gotta say that was epic. Like the way yeah. Dracula actually d did his little dive, we thought he was gonna fail and yeah, cramp. It, it very much <laughs> altered our expectations. We went into thinking like, ah, Drac's gonna fail, be like, ha ha ha, it's so funny, and then he's gonna back up and it'll be a normal movie again. But no, he actually did, and they animated in a really cool way. And yeah, he swooped right. He swooped right down, like down into the clouds, and then across the sea, and then did this big splash right in front of Mavis. It yeah. was actually really cool, and they kept it going. Yeah, so there was definitely some good charm to this movie, and I think there's a bit more the movie did, and just a bunch of its little things every once in a while. Yeah, even despite the faults that it had, it's actually a major improvement. There were some weird things we had to question, like uh, how no one noticed that Mavis was pregnant till she was in bat form. That was something talked about it. That was something I could really never get over with this film. Like you saw, Ma like you saw Mavis in her stature when, uh, when yeah, she, she was adjusting. Yeah, she looked adjusting. completely normal, and then she's like, "Father, I'm pregnant." And then suddenly, you just see a belly. I'm like. That wasn't there a second ago. It wasn't there in her human form or her bat form until she was stand literally standing on the clouds. Also, cloud setting. It's a car it's a it's a cartoon kids movie. Okay, you gotta <laughs> it's suspension of disbelief. You gotta give them just a little bit, okay? A little bit, but it's so okay. So sitting on a cloud is okay, but having a sudden baby bump in her bat form, <laughs> growing instantaneous, is okay. Okay, and that's, I didn't, <laughs> not, I didn't say I'm, forgive I'm me mess, for I'm that. ragging on. I'm not ragging on that one. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, there were other jokes that really made us burst in laughter. Like, when Dracula was working on some sort of Picasso drawing, yeah, and it, cut actually... to a shot of, it cut to a shot of a monster in the exact form of the painting he was trying to draw. That was funny. So he thought he was being artistically creative. It's like, oh, no, it's actually a monster. It's like, okay, <laughs> that that's a little creative. We like that. <laughs> Even sound on a weird fucked up couch, too. <laughs> Yeah, there, there were other moments, I think, that really made us laugh, too. I'm trying to remember what they were, though. They were just there and gone, but... 
What was it? Was it all it was, like the beginning of the movie too. Like a lot of the commentary that Drac, like maybe Dracula had his like, remarks. I liked how they were first trying to baby-proof the castle. Is you know all of the spears now had little soft tips. All the witches, the noses, witches' noses. They also had that too. It's just a, the friggin' baby gate and the zombies still falling over it. <laughs> <laughs> like that, there, there was definitely he had lots of creative room in the movie. Yeah, what else was there? Uh, did it have to do with Dennis? Uh, uh well, I can't really say Dennis did anything funny. No, he's he's not really that much of a character either. He's just he's just completely no, he's stuck. he's just completely one dimensional with no personality. He's just well, that's because he's an absolute baby. How do you give a baby in a movie full of adults personality? Right, you're not. No, I'm not expecting him to have an adult personality. I'm just saying that there was really not much to him in the movie, rather than just you know being there. If I want to talk about characters. Talking about Jonathan, Johnny. Okay, here's the biggest surprise in the movie that we never thought we were going to come across. So let's think about so, the last movie for a minute. Yeah. So Johnny. So insufferable, annoying. Johnny is literally one of the most annoying characters that we ever had the displeasure of having to watch through an entire 90 minute or so runtime. And but that ADHD was HD and a meth pipe. So like, imagine, imagine Shaggy Rogers, Inaho, and Woody Woodpecker thrown into a Happy Madison blender and mushed together to make one super hyperactive character. That was basically Johnny in a nutshell in the first movie. And I look, I'm wave dashing. Smash Bros. joke. <laughs> <laughs> doing the Dracula wave dance. I do not talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but you also don't go blah blah blah. I don't go. Oh, okay, that was another joke we enjoyed. Yeah, we that, love that joke. That kid, uh, Dennis's first word. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like, that was the biggest funny joke right there. It was like it was we got. Much, I do not go. Blah blah blah. Well, maybe you go do it. You don't realize it. And then Dracula <laughs> leaves, and she's like, Blah blah blah. 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 Like, it was you. you. <laughs> it was you. That you was funny. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. Because it was something they were very much building up as this big pet peeve of Dracula's in the first movie. It's like, okay, it's we're gonna have to expect in the second movie. So how are we gonna do it? Kids' first words, and then blah blah blah, and then you continue the blah 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 joke, which we did find, fu which we did find like one of the only few things funny in the first movie, and then like we get it, but then they kick, but then they kick it up to like 5.0 afterwards, with the it was you. It was good. It was funny. That was funny. <sighs> and then about twenty minutes in, we had the about twenty minutes in, we had the comp they the uh, family start talking about uh, going to visit over uh, Johnny's hometown in California. Actually, that led to a bit of disappointment, in my opinion, where we didn't really get to see why Johnny wasn't really happy there. Cause like yeah, you, you when they're in Johnny's home like hometown so, stuff, yeah, he look, makes it. Clear, you can kind of see that he's not happy. He's he just seems utterly disinterested in his town and saying things like yeah, when it's nighttime, nothing really happens. And even though he was actually trying, even though he was actually just going with uh, Dracula's plan to cover up that stuff, we got to keep Mavis happy but not too happy. When they're it going still in seemed town. like there might have been a bit more personal to what he was going through, and I wanted to see what that was like. But they didn't really go. They didn't really show us. I like, this. <laughs> I like the gem. It's useful. Yeah, no, yeah. Get the gem. But it bounces around, hits everything. But yeah, that's kind of left in the dust. But that's sadly for the rest of the movie. That's not the only thing that's left in the dust. But we'll get to that in a bit. But as far yeah. as Johnny goes, I mean, there were moments where Mavis was the one who was really excited about all the stuff in the United about his in his hometown in the United States, and for some reason Johnny was not only the most calm, poised character in that situation, but he was also the most calm person in the entire movie. How do I suck at games this much? Because we're focusing on multiple things at once. That's fair. Very fair. Dang it, I need to still I need to go all the way back to that save point. You play. I can't I can't play games apparently. <laughs> so I'll take uh, over from now. So where were we? We were talking about a Johnny being the most poised character in this entire situation and movie. Speaking of Johnny and things that were genuinely improved, I also like how later in the movie they're doing the whole costume party thing. And how oh. he references the Bram Stoker Dracula movie where he's like the the bright red costume that they were using in that movie. 
Yeah, I I didn't know about it until uh, Navi pointed it out, but that was an actual. I recognize the costume. I recognize they have the absurd hairstyle, and I'm like, that's freaking Bram Stoker Dracula. Did you seriously just get chased off by a table? (laughs) I don't know how to play this game. You never played Castlevania? No, I haven't. Except for the when we were doing the last movie. Clinton, you disappoint me. Why? Because it's Castlevania. It's fucking classic game series. Why? Why is Castlevania such a classic? No. I'm just asking why you're so disappointed. Because I mean, because I, I I haven't played every single game on the planet. It's Castlevania. <laughs> it's like the number one best, one of the best game series of all time. And Yokai Watch is one of the biggest pop cultural phenomenons and one of the greatest games of all time in the world. And you didn't, you didn't. I don't know. I didn't get that same reaction from you or me. Okay. Multiple <laughs> reasons. One, I tried Yokai Watch. And I was so high off my ass of Pokemon at the time that I looked at it as nothing more than a Pokemon ripoff, and I just... I said that was in the past, and I was an ignorant slut back then, okay? <laughs> I'm okay! I'm just making I'm making a joke was, reaction here. I was an ignorant slut back in the day. Uh, language. <laughs> hey, this is, this is YouTube. We've been saying fuck the entire time. How is slut going to be any different? Anyway, back to the, the yeah, last... So point yeah. being is... So yeah, back to the actual main movie, instead of debating our ethics on games and stuff, and how my disappointment in you not playing fucking Castlevania. <laughs> so yes, back to the movie. <laughs> there are a lot of genuine improvements here, so... So many, I have I to say. I don't want to say I'd actively look forward to seeing this movie again, mm. but at the same time, I also will add that if it was on, I don't think I would complain if... I was desperate for, like, a Halloween movie that wasn't Hubie Halloween, Ghostbusters, <laughs> Hall- Halloween, it's, you know, the original Halloween, the you know, actual classic movies. I definitely wouldn't mind watching this, like, again. Honestly, I wouldn't either, and I can't believe I'm saying this, because I'm I still actually... I'm going to go on a limb and say that Hubie Halloween might be my favorite Adam Sandler Halloween-related movie in general, but, I mean, that's... Because I put a bit more effort into that one, in my opinion. We did. And we did have some legitimate fun with it, despite the quality it provided. But, And honestly, on a personal note, I'm really surprised that I got this much into this film. Because I actually, after all the research that I did and the movie reviews I watched and, and how I felt... Fu- and our opinions on the first movie, I actually consider it my, my absolute least favorite movie and series of all time. Yeah. But after watching this... Uh-oh, you lost the diamond. It's gone. You lost it. The second movie was a lot more fun. Yeah. Way more fun yeah, much than more I ever imagined. Much more entertaining. So with that being said, shall we move on to the circles? Yeah, that seems about right. Let's move over to the thing so I can go... Because we'll be getting into the content... We'll be getting in further in the content in ter- uh, but with these circles. Okay, so let me at least take a picture of it so I can almost close to the mic once he's done. Okay, so, uh... Who's Mike? <laughs> so, surprisingly, most definitely the ones that didn't have sins, like the first time, like the first movie. We had celebrity cameos at zero. Well... Because it's just the Happy Madison crew, and... I mean, the only real person we could say is a celebrity cameo would be Mel, Mel Brooks, Brooks as Vlad. But the thing is that Vlad was much more of a main character in this movie than a one-off character. Yeah, he was And we see we know that thanks to trailers and stuff, he's in the second he's in the third movie. So this it's hard to co- qualify this as a cameo. Not really. And plus no. Mel Brooks is he's a he's a comedy genius, okay? I and com- and a classic horror genius too. Well, classic uh, dark film genius. Or you know. Yeah, I know he's a parody he's a parody director. All of his movies are parodies. In comedy. Young Frankenstein included. There was also a reference in that in the movie. Yeah, that, that, yeah, but we'll that get to that. In the movie at one point. We'll get to that. <laughs> so yeah, there weren't any celebrity cameos, so that basically moves us to uh, no, the first home, circle, right? Well, we're gonna go through the rest of the ones that have zeros. Yeah. As well as homophobia. Nope. And stereotypes, because. No. Nah, yeah. Other than monster stuff, there really wasn't any any offensive stereotypes. Really. Like, Just, they go to America, and I'd expect you know a lot more. Well, they're poking fun at the American person and all, but it's like yeah. No, I, they honestly, just... they did kind of poke fun at what American society on what American uh, society is kind of like. How the people can be like very ignorant and bullshit and, like, and the whole convenience store and the whole, yeah the like twenty four the twenty open twenty four seven and all yeah. the junk food stuff like uh-huh. what Mavis was doing with the colored teeth. 
So, like, to an extent, yeah, there was, like, some kind of stereotype, but none of it, none of it was, like, not offensively offensive. bad for us no. to put on the sin scale. It was just... No, not yeah, really. That's a thing that you guys did. Not um, yeah, just it, it was just kind of there and gone. And plus, I think it would have been weird for them to try and force in a homophobia joke. If you know, they nah, did get away with outright saying boobies in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> in a uh, quote-unquote kids... Well, technically it is a kids movie. That was the intention of the production, from what I saw in the research. Yeah. It's a movie made by Sony Pictures Animation, geared directly towards kids, and is specifically called it a kids movie. But so, yeah, let's get into the actual ones that have sins now. So first up is writing, and we, we actually, put that at a level two sin. Oh yeah, level two from three to two in so, the sequel. That if that's a sign that this movie was an improvement, it's that <laughs> it was without a doubt a major improvement beyond our expectations. Yeah. Um. See where whereas this one wasn't that cringe induced a lot of it was no there forced. were still cringe there Let's were still discuss what the plot was about i don't think we've actually properly done that yet no so, we should so the plot of the movie was johnny and mavis have gotten married and now they have a kid and drag wants to make sure that their kid turns into a vampire and finds out that he has to do it before the kid's fifth birthday where essentially like it's implied if he doesn't get his fangs by the age of five then you know he's not a vampire he's human and he's just very much okay. Well, I need my kid. I need my kid to be vampire to carry on family legacy. So, that's just what they do. So, he, so Dracula. Also, to the fifth birthday, Dracula tries to drag. Dracula tries to force the force the kid to turn into a vampire. He so he can because Mavis is like, oh well, since our kid's a human, he should probably go live among other humans where he won't feel so weird and you know different and he'll be safer. So, so we're gonna move out, and Johnny's like, "Well, I I, I don't want to move out." So he and Dracula essentially work together, and be like, "Okay, I'm gonna take my wife out on a little vacation. We're gonna have some fun. She's gonna go meet my parents, in, you know, in America. She's gonna see what American life is like, and see if that's really what she wants for the kid. And all the while, you get our son to turn into a vampire. And if he turns into a vampire, Mavis will have to say that you know." You have, have to, to stay at Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, and that's just what we'll have to do. And so Drac, so they work on that plan, and Drac tries his dang best. And when I say his best, I mean, wow, that was really just a boomer trying his best to act like he was still relevant. <laughs> yeah, that's the majority of his attitude in like this Like, he film. collects a lot, he gets his main cast of character crew, we get to see the mummy, the invisible man, and Frankenstein... Lobby and the werewolf to all show up, and it's like, okay, you guys are going to show him, show him how to be monsters. Frankenstein, you are to go into the park, you go to the spooky woods, which has now been turned into a bike trail park place, and scare the people. Oh. And for some reason, everything was in English in in Romania. Yeah, they're in Romania. I, I get, you know, it's it's a kids movie for targeting the... towards American kids, so like, yeah, I get why the sign had to be in English. But it's also just a little bit of... Come on. We can see it's clearly a gentrified park area now. You don't have to try that so hard to force it. You know, you can also trust that children are also aware and smart, too. Especially since these kids are going to be watching it with their parents in the movie theater and they'll, the parents could explain it. Because you can still entertain your children while also trusting in their intelligence and their intention span. Yeah. So, not really something that the first movie did. Yep. Second one... Honestly, that wasn't really too bad. Yeah. But we had to see just lots of moments of these characters. It's not just showing that we're old and inexperienced. Like, they go to the park, and they go in the middle of the woods. It's like, okay, Wayne, were werewolf man, I need you to kill a deer. I need you to show this kid what the monster is like. We kill don't kill anymore. Deer. We've got Pop-Tarts. Why, why, why kill them when we have Pop-Tarts? It's like, okay, yeah, we, we had product placement for that one. We'll get to yeah. the product placement yes. in a bit. <laughs> but just a lot of them showing that they're old and, you know, they're not the same anymore. You died in this world. What the fuck? Why give that to me? You suck at this game. Lots of moments that were like that. And it's just... Like, okay, one neat little bit of continuity between this movie and the last one was that we got to see that monsters and humans are becoming, beginning to move close, live closer together. Like, when a group of humans come by, like, come by their, hey, Dracula in the middle of a road, they're like, hey, uh, 
Uh, what, what did they say? Uh, we're looking for a place to get a bite. Uh, yeah, did you just them. ask a vampire where where to, where where to get a bite? Yeah, and they, they act as if they're being so offensive. Dracula's like, please don't patronize me. <laughs> please don't patronize please, me. Please don't patronize me. <laughs> I am currently sitting by the side of the road because my car is broken. I do not need you to act as if you're all offended. Please shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much how it goes. Yeah, it's just a bunch of stuff like that. I really couldn't say the movie did anything outright offensive. No, it's not writing. really. What's the sin are we even discussing anymore? Writing. Okay, so... No, oh, yeah, we've, we've got to explain how Mel Brooks' character gets involved. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Mel Brooks is based... So, okay. Mel Brooks' is not, Mel Brooks's character, Dracula's dad, is not... Uh, mm -hmm. does not appear in the film until the very... Uh, until the very fi last climax of the film which Towards is the end weird of the film. because the trailers made it look like he was gonna be a like, major you know, character a major character who introduced much earlier in the movie but nope he's just he's just on hold until the end of the film literally the end of the movie yep and any mention of that before that was that he was very much old-fashioned would definitely not be open to the idea of humans and monsters living together because that's his character setup is that he still holds a grudge on Hi, Father. He still holds a grudge on humans. Yeah, that's what that movie tried doing. And then we get they introduced, and yeah, of course, it's a lot of the, ah, oh, human, humans and monsters can't live together. And that, that was my best Mel Brooks impression. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you. But and then we get this nice little heartwarming moment of Dracula realizing, okay, yeah, I'm wrong. I've been trying to force Dennis to be a monster when he I should let him be happy being a human, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. Fixes the bond between him and his daughter. So that so yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Dracula and Mavis's character as parents here. So that okay, was one so, of the major that was definitely the major point of the film. So Dracula was hell bent or <clears throat> I guess you could say I don't what? know I don't have no idea what my parents are talking about. I was did my parents have the door open? <laughs> they did. Uh, random interruption. <laughs> okay, so back to uh, Dra so back to Dracula and Mavis's character. So Dracula, Dracula throughout the entire movie was well, I guess you could say hellbent. <clears throat> On making sure that, that on making sure that his grandson Dennis, or as he likes to call him Denisovich, I, I honestly think that's a pretty cool name, Denisovich, makes sure that he grows his fangs and becomes a vampire by the age of five. So he, as we talked about, he co he constantly puts him in situations that would uh, you know make him really want to. I'm back. It's all right. Just talking about Dracula and Mavis's character. Yeah, sense how their roles were flipped. Because, like, they're both still overprotective parents and such, but... Mavis basically inherited the overprotective parent... Uh, parent... Of... Uh, what's the word? The overprepared... The, uh, over... 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 Blah, overprotective... Parent thing that her father had. But now with Dennis. Yeah. And... Dracula's still in the... I, everything needs to be according to my vision for how things to be happy... I can't speak. <laughs> no, that I think that was good. He still thinks that, you know, what he thinks is best is the only way things should be. Mavis shows some of that in her character. Yeah, and the, the way, the length that Dracula goes to try and make sure his grandson becomes a vampire is honest, honestly makes him a little unlikable. I mean, I mean, for, for one, calling Mavis Nazi cuckoo during that one skit after tossing him over that little loft platform. Yeah. Little, that thing was huge. Yeah, the size of it doesn't matter. The, the point is, is that he oh put my. his grandchild in. Here's something. <laughs> I didn't. Point being that it doesn't matter that. It's not the size of the thing that matters. It was the fact that. <laughs> can you please stop having an erection joke while I'm trying to <laughs> talk? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So what I was trying to say was, it didn't matter what Dracula did, but the essentially the reason behind it, putting intentionally putting a kid in danger to live up to his expectations and to fulfill his ideals and goals. Yeah. It's almost... So yeah, it didn't matter if it was a giant cliff, it didn't matter if it was 
a tiny, if it was a, if it was off the roof of a base, standard American house. It didn't matter. It just, the point being, in, regardless of the size, it still was very wrong. It was very wrong. Terrible parenting like he did in the first movie. They even called him out for child endangerment. Yes. Yeah, one of the, yeah, they were at the uh, camp for vampires. They went to a vampire summer camp, which Drak thought was going to be all, oh. you know, vicious monster training and such, and then he finds out, oh, it's, it changed to be more PC and, je and uh, kid safe. <laughs> he definitely got some boomer humor out of there. It's like, when yeah. I was a kid... Okay, he didn't outright say this, but his attitude was very much, when I was a kid, we did not put mouse on tea. We went out in the woods. We hunt the mice and ate our guts in the woods. <laughs> when, we, when I was a kid learning to fly, I jumped off giant building that probably would have fell under the weight of its own self. <laughs> it didn't matter if it was a health safety concern, we did it anyway. That's how we did it in my day. <laughs> Uh, that was a, a pretty decent boomer joke, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. Just in the end, it was very much. That was part of. I feel like that should have been something that was a bit more fleshed out. Drac realizing that the world's a lot more. Peep, the world that, has changed. Yeah, he's a bit more of a quote a relic of the past and such. Yeah, so I guess some of the things like uh, updating the hotel, updating the hotel to be a lot I more did, like, open to I the human did, world. I actually did kind of like that because we even got to see some little changes in them acknowledging that some of their humor doesn't exactly translate over. Like, no, there's a magician's like, well, "Is this your card?" Pulls out a guy's heart and just pulls the card out of that. It's like, okay, <laughs> I, I can't help but find that somewhat. Are you fucking kidding me? Die. <laughs> Funny. I know it's not. Do I have any other games I can play that I won't get my ass kicked at? <laughs> Keep talking about the movie. Castlevania. Keep talking about the movie while I try and find something. Hotel Castlevania. No, here we go. Here we go. I've never played Resident Evil before. We'll play Resident Evil instead. <laughs> Hotel Castlevania. <laughs> We're going to. Okay, so back 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 to the right. Back to the right. We're still on so that sin. We haven't moved forward. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I think we've discussed the plot in enough. But as far as the writing goes in terms of quality, yeah, it's kind of lazy, but at the same time, it did give us an interesting twist to make actually, it a little more fun. You, actually, we can technically say that we're on lowbrow humor at this point with how we have discussing the jokes and stuff, of which we gave lowbrow humor a three. Because, yeah, there's, there's some genuine cringe and suffering in there. After Dracula throws... Dennis off the giant dangerous tower thing. Uh, he expects Dennis to be fine. All the kids recorded yep. that. And They've, Dracula yep. explaining how it wasn't child endangerment. And they make a stupid YouTube poop cringe video out of it. And I hated it. <laughs> and all the others, and all the other uh, attempts at being cool. The one we mentioned about a Drac quote unquote busting a move. Yeah, it was really stupid. Yeah, and then there was the gross. And then there was a little bit of gross out humor we saw, like a. Uh, Drooling, the s vomiting, j a couple vomiting jokes, the uh, goop monster peeing on a tree. I played Resident Evil, so I'm gonna go for a middle difficulty. That works. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to recall what were the uh, what were the other really there's like really gross and sort of low really gross scenes in that movie. I'm gonna go yeah, because I know there were a couple of groaners where we were just like, ugh, hmm. didn't need to see that. Yeah, I know there was vomiting. There was. There were just some weird scenes all through, just sprinkled throughout the movie. And lots of just, this was painful to watch. Oh, definitely painful A to lot watch of them moments. were definitely just the older monster characters just re being old and trying to do young people things. Yeah, it's not exactly lowbrow, though. That's just characters trying to, that's just characters trying to tell jokes. I know. Yeah. But if anything's lowbrow, the majority of the lowbrow humor was mostly gross out and a, and a cringy cringy dated references hmm. and the only really other groaners we had were dracula's rea were dracula trying to cover up de uh, his plot of trying to make dennis a vampire yeah Our... three stars members left so Western, punching down we have level one but we're kind of having mixed feelings with that it's, well i i'm having trouble thinking of stuff because i'm fucking not playing a game <laughs> And then the last one was product placement, which was at a two. And yeah. I mean, at first it was just, oh, well, why do this when there's Pop-Tarts? 
and I was an obvious, wasn't that was any, an obvious staple. Like there really wasn't anything outright said with Pop Tarts being the only one outright called. But then they just outright Count after Chocula. After, after freaking after the couple come up to Dracula in the woods and ask if they can help direct them to where they can get a bite. Before they leave, they say, I like your cereal, and then then they drive off. It's like, Count Chocula, why? <sighs> yeah, that was a groan. It's like they couldn't get the actual brand name permission to do that. Honestly, you think the way the monsters kind of treat, the way the humans kind of treat the monsters with the whole, that last reference of Count Chocula, with them calling Ca Dracula Count Chocula, kind of just some sort of form of punching down. Mm -hmm. Really, I guess. just just that really, and the humans quoting, you know, hu humans quoting their life as normal or normal people. I guess. So I've got an ink ribbon. That seems useful. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I laughed, but I think as far as punching this. down, that's really it. I mean, yeah, this movie was definitely an improvement over the first one. Much Not better. as there was less dated humor and such. Definitely some some <laughs> overused gags that everyone could see coming a mile oh, away. Oh, yeah, that was another one too. Uh, Murray, the vampire played by Keaton Michael Keane. Which one was Murray? Uh, the mummy. You said the vampire. Mummy. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, mummy. I meant to say mummy. Who's my mummy? He's my mummy. Wait, he's a guy. There, yeah, the point being is that there's lots of obvious jokes that you can see com coming, like them, like the old guys trying to act as if they're hip and young, and be like, "Oh my back! Oh my back!" Honestly, I did think I did think Murray's uh, Murray's uh, sandstorm conjuration attempt was funny. It was or, I, well, strike that cool at first. Yeah, or interesting, like if something was going to happen, but then they went with a pretty overused joke of having him crack his back and fall into the floor. Yeah. Uh, wasn't really... Yeah, that was... We almost called that an outdated joke, but it kind of is, but... It's not that I wanted to say outdated, I no, meant to say it was overused. Not that it hasn't stood the test of time, it's just been overused, pretty much. Now what's another... I feel like there were other points that we had big reactions to. We covered a lot of the stuff that made us laugh. We covered the writing... Mm. Um, I really don't think there is anything else to say. Uh, and that it was pretty predictable from day one that uh, Dennis was going to become a vampire in the end. I mean, yeah, it was obvious at the beginning that, that was the the natural buildup towards something like that happening. Mm -hmm. Predictable, but I don't know. With this movie, they kind of made it a lot more... Like, even with sort of one-dimensional characters that are just kind of there for just to make jokes, they... This movie actually made it a lot more fun oh, to watch. The first zombie reveal in a Resident Evil game. <laughs> Gee, what are the odds, right? Well, I mean, you don't know. By modern day Resident Evil standards, it could be as a vampire. Was Dracula? Was the Dracula we know involved in this? Yeah. That'd be pretty. That'd be pretty interesting for a comedic, like you know, blend of comedy and horror in this situation. Blah blah blah. How do I equip the weapon? How do I? How do I shoot a gun? I don't shoot. Cock the gun and pull oh, the trigger, goes. blah, blah, blah. Oh, here, here, here. There we go. Aim at the zombie's heart. Fuck. Aim at the head and pull the trigger, blah, blah, blah. Ah. It's not dying. Because zombies are dead, blah, blah, blah. Shoot the head, blah, blah, blah. I can't. I don't have an aiming radical, Clinton. Goodness gracious. He's getting back up. The knife, I guess. How do, how do I attack with the knife? Throw it in his head, blah, blah, blah. Oh, there we go. I figured it out. Oh, did I kill him this time? Sweet, I actually did. Nice That's job. I got an achievement. First kills are all Nice job. Special. You won the trophy. Kills, blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much. The corpse of your comrade, Kenneth. <laughs> okay. But like, okay, so I guess that's really all we can comment on the movie right now. I mean, do you have anything to say? Well, yes. That was so, 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 so much better 
than what we had anticipated when we're going in this. To be fair, we had no expectations. Of no, we around. didn't at all. We hated the first movie. We, we did. did. There was no argument against that. If anything, that. we were expecting the worst. <laughs> we were expecting it to be worse from the first film. First film. Blah, blah, blah. But... <laughs> I do not go blah, blah, blah. And I would prefer you to stop doing that. It's insulting to me and my family. <laughs> Honestly, having a lot of fun these last the first twenty minutes. We both were. Yeah. We did not expect that at all. They actually made it. They actually the made first, the jokes funny. Ironically, the first and last twenty minutes of the movie were what were the best parts of the movie. Ironically, yeah. Even with its faults, it just. I honest, even though I, I even jump. though this is the guy who said I officially just dis- I who decide who decided this is one of my least favorite movie series of all time. I honestly wouldn't be objected to go back to the second title. Yeah. I mean, probably wouldn't rent it again, but if it came on on cable or something, or Netflix, or yeah. some sort of streaming source, yeah. yeah. Agreed. I mean, if I'm if I'm still here, if I'm still here by October, maybe this and Hubie Halloween. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. But oh, yeah, man. but yeah, that just really that just really adds to the point. Ex- just blew expectations right out of the roof. I mean. Yeah, it did have themes like the whole race and prejudice thing between monsters and humans and just kind of threw it out the window by the end of the movie. But other than that, this was fun. Mm -hmm. Now, the next question is, what's the third movie going to be like? Well, We just have the third movie and the fourth coming out pretty soon, and it's not looking good, though. Uh, I remember the third movie takes place on a boat, and then there's some woman who's the son of Helsing who wants to try and kill all the monsters. Gee, I wonder if those two are going to get together anytime soon in the movie. There's well, no indication by, that that would happen. The, judging how the trailer made it look, uh, I want to say the answer is very much yes. <laughs> plus, it, plus, if you think about it, Adam Sandler, Happy Madison Gang, Vacation... Uh, it's, it's basically not... an animated Happy Madison movie. Yeah, let's not let's not go down that road. I mean, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. You just hold the right. It's as if animated this. version of Adam Sandler made a movie as an excuse to go on vacation. Which you know isn't something he's done before. Definitely not. No, like, never, never totally, before. Totally never done that. So honestly, I gotta say, Hotel Transylvania too. Very much a fun movie. That was fun. Well, okay, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna say fun in quotes because, like I said, I mean it's not we good. We enjoyed but... the beginning and the end. It's hard to say we enjoyed the middle part of the journey, but yeah, middle journey was cringe. For the, but unlike the first movie, we had a lot more enjoyment here, and we were much much okay well, we were definitely a lot more okay with doing this and uh, johnny was the most calm character mature character in the entire movie which seems which almost seems bullshit <laughs> seems almost impossible to believe that that's even possible and didn't he say the funniest line in the movie too which one i think it was towards the end when he like when he was wearing the dress yeah that's right are you a hippie or are you I'm white? not a I'm not a, I'm not a hippie I'm a slacker I'm a slacker <laughs> that was a, funny because yeah, yeah. okay. I mean it's just it's funny for me because it's like yeah big mood there Johnny <laughs> but still like he, they just flipped his character upside down in this movie yeah wow yeah for the most part not uh, somewhat solid movie yeah I, I mean it wasn't good but I'm it's still gonna put it on like if I were to give it like a no num- numeric rating scale i'd still put it like less than a five but like compared to the first one oh yeah the first one is definitely absolute one or zero this one's definitely like in the four to five scale i agree the second one had a lot more to offer and a lot more get ga- a lot more successful gags even if the story isn't even if the story is like way far from perfect or becoming a vampire in this case like dennis did mm-hmm it was still entertaining okay. nonetheless. It's not good, but it's not terrible. It's not even awful. It's just fun. It's just fun for what it is. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. A- asshole, let me go. I and... Don't, I don't take your sexual advances. And we were eaten by a zombie. I'm not eating yet. I'm still going. I'm still fine. I'm still fine. I'm still strong. I'm still strong. Come on, Jill. Don't be a Jill sandwich. Stab him in the dick. Stab zombie Jack. What? You called her Jill. Yeah. 
Zombie Jack. Dead. Hmm. I know exactly what referencing it. Please acknowledge it. Ah 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 ah! Blah blah blah. Oh crap! I'm almost dead. So I guess we'll just call this save here. And leave Jill to die. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, that was it. That was Hotel Transylvania 2. So, very much a lot of fun. That was some a lot more fun than I thought. But, yeah, I think next Saturday we're going to... Should we? Next Saturday? Yeah, I think if we're open, should we do another one of these? Maybe not next Saturday, but like after that? Maybe, yeah. The two weeks after... Yeah, two Saturdays from now, we're thinking of doing another one. Another Sandler film. Right, well, like, we go up to our original Sims for you know, the original, wherever it is. Oh. Yeah, we even had a personal note on next to it that said, Johnny cannot shut up. We had, <laughs> we had a lot more to say there, but like here, genuine improvement. Like, yeah, it's. Considering the first film standards, major, in my opinion. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, that was. That's it. That was. Those were the seven circles of Sandler for Hotel Transylvania 2. More like four, because it, it didn't have all seven. Title! Yeah, we'll see you on the next time we do this. Bye. Bye. So, it's got it, cuts got it, glenn, it's got it. Bye bye, me bye, sign out of be bye.